Good morning, everybody. Are we having a good time today so far? Yes. Sure. Sure. I've got hecklers lined up in the second row. Excellent. What's the best talk we've seen so far? This one. This one? The trams. Yes. Enjoyed the tram rides. All right. Good. Um, this is my second visit to ISDC. So um, first visit was 2009. I only go to the Queensland ones. Simple as that. Today I'm going to talk about MariaDB. So some people, has anybody heard of MariaDB? Who's not heard of MariaDB? A couple have not heard, have heard of MySQL. So MariaDB is very much like MySQL. It um, started off as MySQL and then MySQL sort of got bought by Sun. Sun sort of got bought by Oracle. So now Oracle owns MySQL, including the MySQL name, the trademark. So uh, being open source, of course, people can make a copy and fork it and go on with their own development. And Picona has done that. Picona's pretty good guys at Picona. And they've improved MySQL, uh, in particular the InnoDB storage engine. They've uh, made that much better. They call it ExtraDB. So that's a good, good thing in Picona DB. But we're going to talk about MariaDB today. Now this is a guy who originally started MySQL, who didn't really like Oracle much, and he's forked a thing and, and continued developing in a slightly different stream. Um, there was a version called 5.5, and then obviously what comes after 5.5 is 10.0 comes after 5.5, so that's the next release. There's a 10.1 that's been started um, this year, but uh, it's just in alpha. It's, it's probably, um, probably going to be out pretty soon. But anyway, 10.0 is what we're going to talk about today. 10.0 has quite a few features that the 5.5 stream doesn't have. And that means a few features that are not in the MySQL, the Oracle version of MySQL. Um, because it's all open source, of course we've got those green lines down there and we can backport stuff. Whatever Oracle does, we can backport that into MariaDB. And of course what Picona has done, we can backport into MariaDB. So for example, that lovely extra DB engine that replaces the InnoDB engine is in MariaDB as well. And of course in MariaDB it's not called extra DB, it's called InnoDB. So you think you're using InnoDB, but you're really using extra DB, which is good because it's better than InnoDB. Anyway, there you go. That's where we're going with MariaDB. Uh, do we have some programmers? When, <laughs> when you start a new language, what's the first, first program you try to write in the new language? Hello World. Hello World, good. And what's the second one? Pi. Pi? Good Pi World. Good, good Pi World. <laughs> <laughs> Game of Life, Towers of Annoying. I, I always think it's printing out the prime numbers. That's what I like to do, because I'm a bit of a mathematician. So, so MariaDB version 10, can we print out the prime numbers? And the answer is yes, in fact. So one of the features that MariaDB 10 has got is a thing called the Sequence Storage Engine. Now, storage engines in MySQL or in MariaDB, they're sort of the, the bottom layer of the database manager. Normally a storage engine would actually store the data on the disk, but this storage engine, the sequence storage engine, just sort of makes it up on the fly as it goes along. If I've got a little light button here. Oh, look at that. So if you select from this fancy named table here, seek underscore five to one, step two, um, the storage engine, uh, because you've used that fancy name, MariaDB says, right, we're using a sequence storage engine, and the sequence storage engine just gives back those uh, numbers as you'd expect. Is that useful? Or is that just a trick that they're thrown in so you can print prime numbers? They did for you. Did it for me? Um, this will have some uses in, if you wanted to make a list, uh, there's a good example in the, in the website about a list of, uh, let's say you wanted to work out what day the 4th of November was for the next 10 years. You'll find that selecting with this table and joining it uh, and um, doing some mathematical and data calculations, you can work that out fairly easily using this table. There's, you could use it to work out what's missing from a bunch of stuff, join it to things. There's kind of, kind of a few things you can think of for it. But of course, the main thing is printing the prime numbers. And um, that's how you print the prime numbers. So we're just going to select the, inner, uh, the outer query is just selecting the numbers from 2 to 20. And then the inner query is selecting them again, one of those ones that are less than the square root of the number that we're looking at. And um, 
the old remainder operator there. So we're looking for having no zeros. In other words, there's always a remainder, so it must be prime. So we've got prime numbers. Cool. Can you It's only integers. It's only positive integers. Um, pretty much like you see there, whether you, you can go up or down, and you can put a step in there as well. Um, if, if you want to make negative integers, you just have to do some maths on it. You just get some positive integers, do your maths, and you've got it. Well, what was wrong with the classic approach to make a function rather than a name? A function to generate Sequences. sequences. Well, you couldn't really generate a sequence that looked like a table that you can join to other tables. The whole game oh, okay. Okay. of SQL is joining things, and so you want to be able to have this thing that you can join to other tables. What's the next trick we've got? The spider storage engine. So um, I did say that this is going to be about bigger data, and this is one way we can get data bigger, is the spider storage engine. And instead of the MariaDB server actually uh, storing its data on its own disk, it says, well, get that other MariaDB server over there to store some, get that one to store some, and it's sharding the data out over multiple servers. Now, if your application is designed right, you can get uh, much bigger data doing that. And again, if you have your application designed nicely, you can get some faster performance as you spread the load over more servers. The old uh, MySQL and MariaDB had a thing called the Federated Engine. Anybody have a go at that one? The Spider Engine is a bit like that. It just, it just means you're storing the data on the other server. Spider, though, has the advantage you can shard it out, shard out one table over multiple servers. So a bit of a new thing there. Again, on this topic of bigger, we've got the Cassandra Storage Engine. Anybody use Cassandra? Who likes six? What? Yes? One, two, three, four Cassandra, five Cassandra. Any advance on five? You know, we've got those bright colored folders. I think you can hold those up if you need to vote for anything. It's very easy to see. Um, Cassandra Storage Engine is, uh, the Cassandra database is a whole project of its own. It's for massive data. It's not exactly SQL. It's got a, a different query language. Um, but MariaDB now has a Cassandra Storage Engine, which lets us access Cassandra data in our SQL. Um, that would be good. Just for getting a couple of things by primary key, just for the convenience of joining it to some MariaDB tables. Uh, don't try to do your big data analysis that way because it'll be a bit slow. Cassandra introduced an SQL parser as well. Did they? Yeah, it's Cassandra to run on. To run on Cassandra data. Right, yeah, okay. Um, and that's, if, if it's just Cassandra data that you're interested in, use the Cassandra tools. This tool will be if you want to join your Cassandra data to your MariaDB data. Again, the whole trick of MySQL is, or of SQL and MariaDB is joining tables together. This is an engine to join some of that data with some of this data. TokiDB is a good one. Um, this is a serious storage engine which is going to work inside MariaDB. We've been using the InnoDB storage engine for quite a while now. It's a lovely storage engine. Dan, do you like InnoDB? Yeah, pretty good. Dan likes InnoDB. Um, TokiDB is sort of trying to replace it. It's pretty much the same target market. The website there claims to be 20 times faster without even having to do any tuning. We like it so far, hey? Um, you don't have to change your application. 90% compression, so you don't have to have as much disk drives. Uh, schema changes without downtime. This is sounding really juicy. And high performance. Usually with NODB, we try to keep tables within the RAM of the server. This time we don't have to have them in the RAM of the server. High speed insertion and fast indexing. Isn't this great? Who wants one? Yes? <coughs> Any disadvantages? The cost. Oh, it's all, it's all open source. It's all free. The cost, well, it's kind of new, so I haven't had a lot of experience with it yet. Dan's had a go, and it, we had a... It had one issue with one table that didn't index right. Yeah, so, so it's, yeah. We're st it's, it's probably going to be all right. We're still, still looking at that. Now, I'm a little bit cynical about 20 times faster. All right. I reckon... <laughs> They've found a particular application that they can run 20 times faster than InnoDB. And 
I'm pretty sure that's going to be about inserting rows. Um, because TokyoDB uses the fractal tree index, which you can look up on Wikipedia, um, it's designed to allow faster inserts. It's, it's, it's a bit like a binary, a, a B tree, only uh, B tree has very slow insertion times, but this is a uh, fast insertion time on a B tree. Um, the reading time is going to be about the same. So I think to get 20 times faster, you're going to have to be looking at a mainly insert application. But certainly one to watch for the future. I think TokyDB is going to be going to be nice. Okay, it's time to talk about replication. And this is how we used to do replication with MySQL and MariaDB version 5.5. Um, as, the, as the master server, the clients write to the master server and they update their database. They also write those transactions into the binary log. Sometime later, that binary log gets copied across to the slave server. Sometime later, I mean, you know, a millisecond later, hopefully. Um, and they get pooled there, or queued up in the relay log file, and then they can get processed um, to update the slave database, and then eventually put into the binary log on the slave as well. That's pretty simple replication architecture. It wasn't really thought about when MySQL was first designed. It was hacked on afterwards. Not a bad hack. I probably would have been proud if I'd done that myself. But anyway, we've got some little problems with it. One of the, uh, I think I've got a slide on that. The problem is, when we're setting it up, uh, we need to tell the slave server what position in the binary log we're interested in. So this, um, this part here, we have to say, well, we're going to read starting from the third log file and 100,000 bytes down the file. That's where we want to start replicating from. So those are pretty hairy numbers to deal with. And if you wanted to change the slave over, <laughs> so let's say you've got a master one over here, and we've got some binary log files like that. And then we've got our slave down here, and it's reading from those binary log files, but we want to change the slave over to read from master two, it's got different binary log files, and you don't know which log file we're supposed to take over from and which position in that log file. So that business of changing from master one to master two, it can be kind of a tricky, tricky thing to do. The other problem with this setup is um, when the server shuts down, when the slave shuts down, it stores that position in a flat file on the disk so that when it starts up next time, it knows where to continue from. But flat file on a disk, as you can imagine, if the server crashes, we haven't necessarily stored that location accurately. It's not saved in a crash safe way. So if the slave crashes, it may not restart its replication properly. So they've been a hassle, provided lots of entertainment for me over the years. Um, so they're the problems with replication. Now the new way of replication is the global transaction ID. Now this is something if you're ever doing replication in MariaDB, use it. It doesn't have any um, disadvantages, so just do it. Um, bottom line, safer, easier replication. Oops, too fast. All right. So what happens now is every time I've got a choice of three colors here, green, Green and green. So every time we write a transaction into here, we put a global transaction ID number into it. So there's number 17, then number 18 will come next probably, and so on, they go down here. It's this global transaction ID number which is memorized in the slave, and therefore, um, when we switch over to the different master, uh, we can just quote that same number, and that master will go down, look through its binary log, and find where that number is, and continue on from there. Is that simple? OK. People have played around with replication for a while, and we've got stuff where these guys can replicate from each other in a sort of a circular fashion, um, or a slave can write its binary log out, and then you put another slave on afterwards. Uh, you can get very complication, complicated replication topologies, which will make, make this um, global transaction ID not quite work. But never mind, they sorted that out because it's actually a combination of three numbers and they've worked at all those problems and it, it just works. The other thing is it's not saved in a flat file, but it's actually saved in a table in the slave. It's saved in an InnoDB 
system table, and that is saved in the same transaction, in the same commit, as the binary log item that we're replicating. So it's always going to be exactly committed spot on. So global transaction IDs are the way to go. If you've heard of global transaction IDs in the old Oracle MySQL, they're just a little bit different to this one. We're starting to deviate a little bit from being the same. So global transaction IDs, use them. This is, uh, this is under the safer heading. Parallel replication is, we're getting under the faster heading now. Another problem that we used to have with uh, MySQL is that the slave couldn't keep up with the master. That was because the master had, uh, may have several clients connected. Each client has its own thread. So you're having multi-threaded updates on the master database. But the parallel slave only had a single thread to process all its logs, process all these uh, replication logs that came across. So uh, the slave would get behind. That's bad, disappointing, sadness. Uh, and now we can have several threads running. And how much faster is that going to be? Any like, anybody like to guess? 20 times. 20 times. No, 10 times. Uh, 10 times. I'm going to look at the blue line. This, this is not my chart. I just uh, lifted this one. Uh, the blue line, binary log crash. So it's writing binary log again. It's crash safe. And you can see quite clearly with this red button here that um, if you have, say, 10 threads in the slave, you can get up to like 3,500 transactions per second, up from 350. So we're 10 times as fast in the replication thread. Who believes we can go 10 times as fast? I reckon this chart was made by the guys who are trying to push us on parallel replication. And I don't think you're going to get 10 times as fast in the real world. In order to get 10 times as fast, you have to have just the right set of circumstances. And looking at the fine print up the top here, this is using sysbench oltp.lua, which is a particular, it's a common sys, uh, test bench used for MySQL, but it does happen to be a rather long transaction that gets committed all in one go. And that just happens to be suitable for proving this point. So um, your application may not be quite as good as that. But in any case, uh, we're finding that's we're finding that's getting us ahead, aren't we, Dan? Um, this is a bit new, so just be a bit careful with it. Um, but definitely shows some promise of keeping those slaves up to date. There's two modes for the parallel replication. Out of order means it'll just process anything in any order that it finds it. Um, that's way fast, but um, if it applies transactions in a different sequence to what was done on the master, you could end up with some different data. So that's only for particular applications that are designed to handle that. In order mode is what you're probably going to use where MariaDB automatically makes sure the transactions are processed in a good sequence. So to get speed ups in in order mode, it depends on the master uh, committing a few transactions at once. There's a couple of variables you can put on the master to control that the binary log commit wait count and binary log commit wait microseconds, uh, you tune those variables up and it lets the master commit a few together. It makes the master go faster as well and it gives the slave opportunity to um, do some parallel committing. Even if you don't do that, um, there's, there's some, oh, I've got that button wrong again. There's some particular cases here where the slave can get a little bit of overlap and improve a bit of time as well. So that one's faster. What have we got next? Engine independent table statistics. So it used to be that uh, MySQL, to optimize its query, to decide which index to use first, it would ask the storage engines, hey, what about this index? Uh, should I use that? And the storage engine would sort of try to say which indexes it thought were good. Well, now we can do this out of the storage engine and back up in MariaDB. So there's a chance that that will help your um, optimizer get out the best query plan and maybe make things go a bit faster. Maybe, uh, maybe not, maybe it's already going the fastest way anyhow. So maybe for some situations. Maybe for our TokyoDB, Dean. And there's some little internal things here to, um, you know, they're always doing little performance improvement 
um, things. And the people who've coded them, I like, I like those people. And uh, they, I'm sure they could be my friend, but they've probably just coded some quirky little feature that doesn't actually get exercised in my particular application. So there's a whole list of them. I just picked out four there, three. Um, some of them, it's even a bit difficult to understand what they're doing unless you're up on the internals of the thing. Anybody got any questions? This is a good point for questions. No questions. Just raise up your pretty folder if you have a question. Good. All right, so there's some new replication techniques in version 10. One of them is, um, is multi-source replication or multi-master. Some people call it multi-master. I call it multi-source replication. And the other one is um, synchronous replication using Galera. But I'm going to talk about those on Thursday. If you want to know some more details about any of this stuff, then uh, I've got some workshops running in February in Sydney. If you look on our website, you'll see some other dates. No, then no other dates are up yet, but there will be some other cities going a bit later in the year next year. <gasps> and that's about all I got. Any questions? Excellent. I finished only five minutes late. <laughs> Thank you all for coming.